This is me stood in front of the fish tank of the Majestic 530 catamaran. I have no words, but let's go and have a good look inside. <laughs> Welcome to the review of the Majestic 530 Catamaran. Let's start this review by a good look at the helm and everything that has to offer and let's listen to Teresa's thoughts on the day. This is the helm position of the Majestic 530 and like everything else on this boat it is pretty spacious and I'm going to kind of leap up. I can see that there's a, um, a foot rest for me to help me get up but I can't <laughs> work it right now so I'm just going to jump. There we go. And uh, from here I'm at, up very very high so the water is really uh, quite far away from me right now and uh, I assume that there's like a cockpit enclosure, I can see that there is. So underway I would be feeling much safer if this was all enclosed, which I'm sure it could be. Other than that, fantastic visibility forward and like we've seen on quite a few catamarans um, this show, we've got these opening hatches forward as well. So there's, uh, I'm assuming it's, it's glass and it's also got a windscreen wiper, so in fog, rain, whatever, you've still got clear visibility and then you can open them up, uh, presumably when you're at anchor and you've got some nice airflow through the cockpit, which is great. In terms of uh, accessibility, as per usual, most things come back to the helm position. You've got the, the actual helm itself, the wheel, you've got all your engine controls, all your, you know, your chart plotter and radar and all that kind of thing right here as well as two ginormous electric winches and I can see a lot of lines are coming back to this side as well but they also go back to the other side also so you're, you're controlling your lines from here but also the other side of the boat. Moving on to look at the deck space now the deck is easily accessible and there are good handrails on the whole length of the coach roof. Similarly this boat has solid guardrails which is fantastic and the decks are wide and clean. We would have liked to have seen flush mounted hatches, however, there are good steps up to the coach roof so access to that mainsail and then to the solar panels are going to be easy. The life raft is mounted on the deck, which is a place we like to see it mounted, so congratulations there to Majestic. Overall, it's only that incredible height from the helm seat to the cockpit that are going to dock this a point, so 9 out of 10. Category 2 sees us doing what I love to do the most is to climb into the engine bay. The engine bay on the Majestic 530 was huge. Everything was clearly labelled, the conduits were filled with self-expanding foam and it looks as if everything has been thought out. Similarly there are storage areas for additional oil and plant machinery and apparently some ginger ale down there. The rudder stock was well supported and braced using an aluminium flange and the steering mechanism was robust. Overall I was very happy with the engine bay on the Majestic 530, congratulations. Moving above deck, everything was super well built. The gooseneck on this Majestic 530 looked super sturdy. There is a lot of work that has gone into making this a perfect voyaging craft. The outriggers on the solar panels are a super clever idea and the quality of the stainless steelwork and the thickness made me believe that this was built to be a robust boat that has serious blue water capabilities. I was very, very happy with this. Moving into the boat, the switch panel was clear and well laid out. There is a lot of equipment on this boat. It is a very high-tech boat. And as the rep was keen to point out, this boat is customizable to the nth degree. There is not a lot they cannot make for you or build for you. So really, you choose the fit out you want, you take the design to them, they will build it. It's a really lovely concept. As for the interior that we saw, everything was very, very well finished. The boat had top of the range appliances, the cabinetry and joinery were all top notch, the catches, every part of this boat has been well thought out. Overall, I am happy to give the Majestic 530 a 9 out of 10 for build quality. Some aspects of the build were a little bit Heath Robinson, the solar panels for instance, but it is a very well built boat, congratulations. So before we head to the next section, some shameless advertising from us. The Annapolis Boat Show was an amazing show and we have seven more reviews in the pipeline for you. In addition to the 12 that we already have and we are using your scores to collate the best and the worst on the market. So feel free to click that little red subscribe button and never miss an episode. Thanks very much. Hunting. 
So let's now take a look at the interior design and overall livability of the Majestic and we'll start as usual in this truly cavernous cockpit. So this is the cockpit of the Majestic 530 and it is huge. It has so many seating options and my understanding is that this is quite a highly customizable boat so I assume that you can make some changes if this particular layout doesn't suit you. However, you know, you've got so many seats right here for all of your friends that you would presumably have on board with such a spacious catamaran. You've got a great dining table, you've got a little coffee table on the other side, which I understand actually you can take to the swim platform on the back in case you want to enjoy your sundowners on your swim platform with your little coffee table. So that's fantastic. Uh, really comfortable. Convenient seating, as I said, this uh, is a dining room table, but it also, what's underneath here, Nick? It's a chest freezer. It's a chest freezer. I knew that there was something underneath here. So, yeah, and there's also, if you just look behind me, this is where this owner has put their washing machine. How do I open this? There you go. And then there's more storage in here. So, there's also a chest freezer uh, on the other side. There's plenty of storage in the cockpit, and it feels kind of it's so big and so there's so much I mean headroom doesn't even begin to describe it like there's literally another probably five foot of headroom before we get to the bimini that I feel like I'm really more like in a patio or like a garden or some kind of like outdoor area in a house than actually on a boat it I cannot express how spacious this is very very comfortable practical and as I stand here I don't have particularly good visibility so if I was underway I'd have to be at the helm because I can't actually uh, see forward very well right now um, so that's just one consideration you when you're underway you would have to really sit up at the helm but other than that fantastic cockpit. I don't even quite know where to start with the inside of this catamaran First of all, it's highly customizable. So what you see here isn't necessarily the only option. Apparently, you can pretty much do what you want, apart from moving the bulkheads. You know, apart from that, you know, your imagination is your only limit. So, but this owner, let's have a look at what they have chosen to do. They have this huge galley, complete with an island. I think that's the first time I've seen a galley island on a catamaran of this size. It's 53 foot long, so it's big, but not kind of crazy big. And they have literally everything. I mean, you've got the world's biggest double sink right here. You have a washing machine. You have multiple fridges and freezers. You have a wine fridge. You have a wine rack. You have more storage than you can shake a stick at. You have a coffee machine. You have literally everything. So, as I said, in terms of styling, I mean, I quite like this styling, but if it's not your cup of tea, you can change it. And this really feels like a home. So, I really like this boat so far, it's really impressing me. Is it the boat for us? I think it's a little bit too opulent and a little bit too over the top, but I can see the is appeal. It's very, very impressive. Let's look at ventilation. You know, by now the ventilation is something that I really take notice of. Great ventilation in this boat, fantastic. We've got no less than four forward-facing opening hatches, which I think is a record. Brilliant. Also, two big opening hatches up above. So if you are sitting here and in an anchorage and it's warm and it's muggy, I mean, I'm sure this boat has air conditioning, but there's no need. You could open these hatches and be really nice and comfortable inside. This is the wine rack I was mentioning before. Again, this is customizable. You can do whatever you want with that space. The settee, the owner has chosen this layout, I assume. It's a bit smaller than what I would personally choose, but I don't think that that would hold me back. Um, I'm sure that you can make it bigger, slightly different shape if you wanted to. So the only thing that's missing from this boat is an inside nav station, or at least a, a dedicated nav station. They've kind of incorporated the nav station to this part of the galley, um, which probably, presumably works well for the owners. It, is it something that I would want? I'm not so sure. They have a little bar stool that you can sit up at, and I will check in just a moment to see if you can actually see out and you've got all your instruments there as well. So that's obviously their nav station. Would I want something a little bit more dedicated to navigating from inside the boat? Probably. Let's see if I can actually see out of this, of this stool. 
Yeah, so as I suspected, I cannot see anything. So this is not a place I could sit and do my watch from. What I would say is that I don't think that would be a deal breaker on this particular boat because the outside helm station is so well protected that that is where you could definitely sit and do watch in almost all conditions. So I don't think you would need that interior nav station like you might on say an Outremer where you don't have that really fantastically enclosed uh, exterior helm you want something inside that you can uh, use as a backup. I'm going to take you down now into the one of the hulls. I was going to say the master hull, but it's not really. Um, the You can have a full master hull. This particular boat, I think, has a total of four cabins. Again, you can choose basically what you want. The owner has uh, converted this aft cabin to a workroom, which is great. Um, and there's a mattress there at the moment, but you can stow that away and this becomes a like a workshop. I'm sure Nick would be all over that. You've got a little toilet in there. I mean, it's just a basic heads um, with no separate shower. You could have had a separate shower, however they've turned the area that they would put the shower in to a pantry. Brilliant. I wish that I could have a pantry on my boat. This is fantastic. So that's an option. But a great use of space I think by the owner. This is the kind of master area and you can see that there is like the world's biggest bed behind me. Huge. I don't know if you can kind of really appreciate it on camera, but believe me, this is a very, very wide bed. I'm not sure exactly how wide it looks like a king. I'm pretty sure the owner said it was a king. It certainly looks huge. Forward, there is a shower room complete with a bath. Now, we just showed the Majestic 440 that had a bath, and we were impressed. This bath is actually smaller than the Majestic, but if a big bath was your priority, I'm sure that, that could be accommodated. So, just in here, you've got a hollow space that you could fill with some water and have a nice little splash. That is something that Nick would probably be quite keen on. Other than that, I mean, very light filled, spacious shower room. We've got good ventilation. This boat has really good ventilation actually. And a total of three opening hatches in the shower room. Huge mirror, you know, everything that you could want. And again, whatever styling you like, whatever layout you like, it seems that they can pretty much accommodate you. The master cabin, again, the ventilation is fantastic. You've got a huge opening hatch above and then two opening hatches just to the side of the ginormous king size bed. So I can imagine this would be a lovely and very comfortable room to have as your main bedroom. There's also a big hatch on this side. So yes, natural ventilation, big thumbs up from me. I love it. All right, let's go down into the uh, other hull. This is uh, your aft cabin and as you recall um, in the other hull they have turned this into a workshop but this is the kind of alternative. So just a nice um, cabin here, good ventilation once again, you've got three opening hatches, lots of natural light and plenty of storage space so your guests will not have a problem putting all of their things away and you've got a shower room here just for this guest um, that has a separate shower uh, which is really fantastic. Again, lots of opening hatches, lots of space, storage, some really nice tiling on the floor. And uh, yeah, this is a, a great room for your guests, but it's definitely not the only option for your guests. So we have, and by the way, this is the only boat that Nick has actually gotten lost on so far. So let's go forward. We have a forward berth wide it looks like a double bed or maybe even a queen size bed and um, again plenty of storage space opening hatches i mean this is again a great area to put your guests and you also have a separate shower room for them um yeah including a, sh a separate shower stall from the heads so another big thumbs up there if you take a uh, a right turn you can actually go up into this other cabin right here and this has a smaller berth. Um, I think that you could only put one person, maybe two small people, particularly like a couple of children or something like that. That is where you would put um, those people here. But another great option. And once again, loads of storage. Everywhere I look, there are cupboards, there are drawers, um, there is storage. So that is a really great feature. Even this tiny berth has two opening hatches. That's fantastic. And 
they have their own yes shower room as well with a separate shower so i mean i'm very very impressed right now for us getting onto a boat for the first time that we never have seen before so sight unseen is always interesting and literally we had no idea what to expect from this boat i have genuinely never seen so much internal space on a 53 foot boat it makes a lagoon 50 seem cramped this it's absolutely incredible it's also the first boat i've ever got lost on uh it, I, I am blown away by the space on this boat and blown away by the price of it it's 1.2 million dollars fully loaded now i know i go on about this a lot in our reviews but if you are paying for european labor rates you are paying more than you will if these boats are built in south africa and so you benefit from a, a better labor rate which that saving is passed on to you so i am yeah wowed by the space wowed by the customizability and the uh, the willingness of the manufacturer to say actually you don't like that we'll do this as we said in another review the boat market is changing and the market is should it's changing the way that other industries work now rather than saying sorry we can't do that they will be they should be saying and uh, they are saying here yes we can we can change this and we will change it so the options are for layouts as long as you're not moving bulkheads it's just about you you change anything you want from wood finish to leather finish but then to the layer of the galley to to the layer of the, the cabins it there's so much on this boat however you are looking at you know what is the downside why aren't all boats doing this it is very 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 high sided and there is probably an eight foot drop between standing up at the uh, helm station and the the floor of the cockpit so there is it is you know the, it is a very high sided boat Overall, if you want space and you want livability and you have a family, this I, I don't think this can be right. I think it's difficult to actually rival this. Um, so yeah, so first impressions, first impressions do count. Um, for me, the one thing I would say about this over everything else, space, space and space. It is huge. So how are we going to score this category? I don't think I can give it anything other than a 10. It's just infinitely customizable, incredibly spacious, perfect for living on board. Well done, Royal Cape Majestic. Now we look to category four, which is performance and statistics for the Majestic 530 Catamaran. The length of the boat is 53 feet, which is 15 meters in length. She's a beamy girl and 28 feet, eight meters six for that. Draft actually quite shallow drafted. She is four foot in draft, but that's 1.2 meters. The displacement here, she's 20 tons, and I think that's the light displacement. So once she's fully laden, she's gonna be particularly heavy. Add to that a sail area of 70 square meters for the main, 60 for the Genoa. She is not going to be overly speedy. So for performance, we're only going to award the Majestic 530 a 4 out of 10. A heavy boat with not particularly great sail area. Our final category sees us looking at value for money for the Majestic 530 Catamaran. And bear in mind that the currency conversion is accurate as of the 1st of November 2019. The base price for the boat is 1.2 million US dollars. That's 930,000 pounds or 1.1 million euros. Final price, exactly the same. This boat is turnkey. There is almost nothing you will need to add. And as such, I believe that getting a 53 foot yacht for 1.2 million fully loaded actually presents better than average value for money. In this case, if you are looking for a 53 foot dedicated blue water cruising yacht, which is fully loaded and ready to take you around the world, then this, I believe, represents above average value for money. So six out of 10 for Majestic, well done. That was the Majestic Catamaran. So again, thank you so much to Majestic for taking their time at the boat show uh, to show us that amazing boat. It is a big old lump. Cool. Um, yeah. And so let us deal with the positives and then the negatives, if there are any, of the Majestic 530. Therese, positives. Well, I think that it's fairly obvious from that review that if you are in the market for a 53 foot uh, catamaran and your priority is space and um, the ability to customize or semi customize um, your boat, then I don't know whether you can go past and you've got the budget. 
I don't know whether you can go past the Majestic. The sheer amount of volume in that catamaran was mind boggling. And the fact that you, and the boat that we saw on the day obviously was uh, customized by the, the owner, but you, if you want to go onto the website, you can have a look at different options and they will do a lot of different things for you. You can basically just design it the way that you like it. Um, so you have to kind of use your imagination as you're watching the video to kind of figure mm -hmm. out what, what is part of the boat and what you can change. Um, but yeah, as I said, uh, in terms of a, essentially a floating house, it because it is so ridiculously spacious, that it really does feel like you're living on a house and in a house and you are making very few com compromises in terms mm -hmm. of comfort then uh then i can't i can't think of a better option for you i was very i was blown away by the amount of space okay um so positives for me yes the it is a big big boat i am i'm quite unsure as that you know what, unless you are doing a circumnavigation with eight people on board, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Like people like space. Uh, space, yeah. yeah. In, in the same way, like, I like bowling alleys, but I don't need one on a boat. <laughs> if uh, you had, uh, I think that if you had a family, or yeah. if you were hoping and planning on lots of people coming to stay, yes, yeah, yeah. then um, it would be great. Okay, so um, so positives, the space, it is huge. It is the it, I, internal volume? I'm like, wow. That's the first thing that I liked about the boat. Yeah. Second thing is, um, yes, again, uh, the complete customizability. She's a semi-custom build, mm. and they were very, very keen to show us, albeit using, you know, like A4 bits of paper, which is very 23, um, you know, how the options for that yeah. boat, how, how it's done in so many different ways. Well, they had lots of brochures there that we had. Yeah, to so um, yeah. I, I think personally that, you know, whatever your heart desires mm. internally, you can have. Mm -hmm. um, so again, and I said this uh, on the last video, I believe that the boutique manufacturers going into 2020 have um, quite a huge competitive advantage yeah. over the uh, production cat manufacturers at the moment because for the same price as a production cat where they will not change a sink or a work surface or a galley color, you can go to South Africa mm. or to Vietnam and for significantly less, get a better built yep. custom boat where they will do whatever you want. I mean, you could actually probably theoretically, although why on earth you would do this, you could go to um, Majestic, Majestic <laughs> and say, I want you to fit out this boat exactly like a lagoon. Yeah. And they do it for you for less money. Yeah. So the point is, uh, you're getting a better boat mm -hmm. for less money. Yeah. You do get a lot of better money. Okay, well, positives about the, the Majestic 530. Let's talk about negatives, if there are any, Therese. Well, all that space and volume comes at um, the compromise of performance. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't expect to be flying along at any record-breaking speeds, but I can't imagine that being a deal breaker for people who are interested in the Majestic. Yeah. So I'm not really going to go there. Um, the one thing that I don't think can be changed is uh, the helm. And the helm for me was like so high up and I'm not saying that it would be unsafe in like 99% of situations. I think that, you know, the, the seat itself, you know, you could, it is quite secure. But just because it is so high up, if, I don't know, maybe it's just because we come from a monohull situation and I'm very kind of aware of the, the movement of the boat. You've got a real drop there. Oh. Look, we have extolled the virtues of like the, 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 the different areas of a cockpit and mm. the, the, the height between the helm station and the cockpit floor. Mm. And really, you know, a foot or so, that's all right. You know, if you come off that in the, on the night watch, because don't forget, you are doing a lot of things on big passage when you are tired mm. and it's dark and it can be wet and uncomfortable. That drop must be six foot. Yeah. And really, you know, you could break you, a leg coming down that thing. Yeah, exactly. And that was, so that to me would be the biggest flaw. And I know that you can say, well, you know, you have like sports tops or like the, the kind of like boats that have got like, what are they called? The ones that. 
Yeah, they're called different. I know what you mean. Yeah. Like the the helmet, you know, like the the leopards, for example. Yeah. Got the helm up. Or the one, or the naughty tech has got the kind of like the the, the, the kind of. What's oh, it? the flybridge. Flybridge. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. So you, it's. Yeah, but that's you're not. But you, you know, don't you're... have a six foot drop. Yeah, and exactly. That to me would, so yeah, agree. Negative number one. The drop of that helm is outrageous, <laughs> yeah. and to the point at which if you if you came off that, yeah, and it wouldn't even uh, require um, you know like really bad weather where you're thrown out of it, just just tripping down in yeah. the middle of the night when it's a bit wet. Yeah, you would you you don't. If a you're not like you know yeah. super agile, or even if you're just having a clumsy moment, it's not even super agile. But we both, are, you know, when you're tired, we've done this on long passages. Yeah. You just make silly mistakes, and I've seen you go careening across a bloody saloon, be, you know, covered in porridge oats because you were tired. <laughs> to be fair, that, that was the conditions. I, I know, I know, but the point is, when you're doing ocean crossings, you, you get conditions. Yeah. Okay, so first thing, uh, that um, the that helmet is... Covered in porridge oats. I'm still cleaning up porridge oats. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the next buyer of Ruby Rose, any <laughs> oats you find on the others. Um, other negatives. Um, two things that um, I think are small negatives. Firstly, a lot of it looked a little bit Heath Robinson to me. It looked a little bit kind of like thrown together by engineering students at university. Like the, and they're clever ideas. But um, for instance, um, the solar panels on the coach roof, they all come out on outriggers. But it looks a bit like Meccano. It's not an elegant... I have literally no idea what any of those references are. Uh, okay, well, there's a link <laughs> down below to what Heath Robinson means and what Meccano is. No. Uh, Meccano is. For crying out loud. Anyway. All right. Um, Doesn't matter. But it, it looked, it, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly elegant. Okay. It was all kind of like metal, you know, bars and beams and stuff. Yeah. And I can see how it works, but it does look a bit amateurish. There you go, that's okay. a good way. Um, the second thing about that boat is, it's not pretty. No. It is, it is, it literally, there's like three steps going up to the coach. It is like, wow, it is a high sided lump. And I have always said that, you know, and this is probably the irony of what I'm saying now as we do categorised boat reviews based on five <laughs> criteria assessed by you, is that ultimately you buy a boat with your heart. Mm. You don't buy a boat with your head. Mm. You can use all this to kind of go, oh yeah, well look, ooh, five out of 10 for this and six out of 10 for that. And oh look, look what Nick says about the engine access. But you buy a boat with your heart. So all this aside, categories aside, you buy the boat with your heart. And I mm. think that this to me, the, the aesthetic of it is enough for me to go, yeah, I know it's got all these positives, but man, it looks like Postman Pat's fan. I think, I think the thing for us, and I said this in the video, is that it's, it's not, look, this boat is not for us at all. It's, it's not even close to the type of boat that we want. And that's not a problem with, like, you know, there's no issue with the boat, it's just not our yep. style. It, you know, it's too big, it's way, way, way too big. Too much interior volume for just, you know, <laughs> the two of us kind of bouncing around in this huge boat. And it's just too, um, I guess, yeah, opulent and it's like there's just too much going on. We, we, we crave something a little bit more simple. Yeah. However, for a family yeah. wanting to go around the world yeah. in customizable luxury mm -hmm. where you are not heavily influenced by the aesthetic of what you are getting on the outside this will be high on your list particularly if you want to take your pet fish with you if you want a fish tank on a boat then this is <laughs> the way no you to go. if you have a burgeoning interest in aquarium aquarii then honestly this is this is You're particularly attached to your fish <laughs> exactly and i have to come with you i can't leave without the timmy <laughs> anyway timmy <laughs> Timmy the fish. Timmy the fish. So yeah. <laughs> so if you if you and Timmy the fish want to circle now again, then uh, look to look to Majestic Five Thirty. Anyway, uh, that was a Majestic Five Thirty. Overall, a fantastic boat. Um, full ticks a lot of boxes um, for the family um, wishing to travel with fish. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching this one. We'll be back very soon with yet another review, and we look forward to seeing you then. So goodbye. Cross my heart, oh, goodbye. What you seeing you then? So goodbye. Goodbye. See, I just whispered it. Goodbye. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I don't know. What are you doing? Singing a f song? I just feel weirdly self conscious when I say goodbye. Do it again. Goodbye. What's wrong with you? Why?
why would you visit? Why would you whisper to me? <laughs> <I don't... laughs> this is not normal. I need to either say goodbye or just keep my mouth shut. I can't believe you. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Nothing. Timmy the fish. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>